Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Anthony Molesky from Nickel 28. How are you today, Anthony? Great, Tracy. Thanks for having me on. We are delighted, actually, to have you on. You taught me so much just about nickel. So why don't we start there? You were telling me nickel is a hotter commodity than copper. Or did I get that quote wrong? Well, you know, I, I, think, um, I think it's hard to uh, overlook nickel and the importance that it plays in the, the revolution underway here to electrify not only cars, but the grid and, and a lot of aspects of our life. Um, a key component of those batteries is nickel. And, you know, it's been a little bit overlooked. And so I'm pretty excited about nickel in the coming years as, as people adopt these electric technologies. I think you took it a step further in an investor talk that you hosted. You were talking about being very interested and committed to environmental commodities. Would you like to just talk about that and, and why you elected to become the executive chairman for Nickel 28? Yeah, so, so you know, I, I think that um, when you look at a commodity and you look at um, what makes the supply and demand unique and interesting in any, in any situation, any commodity, uh, it's really thinking about a transition. And, you know, right now that transition we're seeing is twofold. It's the electrification, which you've, you've actually been out there and you've talked a lot and you've hosted a lot of interesting guests. And that's, you know, the batteries um, that, that go into energy storage systems, not just cars, but also your house and your neighborhood and, and businesses. So that's one aspect of it. But, but another aspect that I'm interested in, which is also a corollary or related, is environmental commodities. And that's related to emissions. And, you know, an example would be methane or carbon. And so I think when you're identifying interesting opportunities, it's really important to think about a transition underway. And so for me, those, those things are combined because when you're talking about automobiles, for instance, you're talking about emissions ultimately. And so you're talking about not only the metals uh, that actually go into that battery or into that car, you know, think about aluminum as well, or tin, but you're also talking about some of the offsets like the offsetting of the carbon footprint from those particular materials. And in this case, we'd be talking about carbon but um, if we think even more broadly than that, you know, methane is, is really bad, a really bad emission. And so uh, I'm looking at uh, a range of these commodities as we kind of now really enter the sweet spot or the beginning of the sweet spot for electrification. You know, we've been talking about it, Tracy, you and I have been talking about it for five years. And um, I think now you're seeing that uptake in electric vehicles, you're seeing that uptake in uh, Tesla power walls. And so now we're really going to start to see the impact of that uptake on actual commodity supply and demand. And I'll give you an example. So at Nickel 28, we produce MHP, a mixed hydroxide product. And we're the largest producer in the world. Um, and that goes almost exclusively today into chemicals, which go into these batteries. And if you look historically at nickel payabilities and where they are, the payabilities that we're receiving today are actually higher or as high as the peak of the last bull market cycle. Now that, that's really crazy because we're nowhere near the peak of last cycle in terms of nickel price. And so what that means to me is there is a huge, huge demand coming. Now, another interesting data point is the LME contract which is where you know, nickel trades, among other places, is primarily made up of, of briquettes. And briquettes are a great nickel product. They're not MHP, but they're a great product because you can store them, you can pour acid on them, dissolve them down and make chemicals. So uh, it's a much easier transition from a briquette than it is from a metal bar into something that you go into a battery, right? And if we look at the, if we look at the LME, you know, slowly, slowly that stock is ticking down which also tells me that consumers are buying up these briquettes, um, which would kind of be in line with what I'm telling you about MHP. And, and, and it's really happening. They're using this stuff to put in the batteries. And so for all those reasons, I just think that um, over the next decade, uh, it's the most interesting place to be. Now, as a trade, you need to go buy coal and there's pressure on coal. People are shutting mines down, but that's just a trade, right? Like that is what it is. You know, you rent that, you don't own that. But if you want to talk about where the market's going, I really think it's it's these commodities 
that uh, are focused on the transition. Well, you know, and for those of you out in investor intel land that are going, okay, April 28th, that's very interesting, compelling case for getting involved in, and investing some interest in nickel. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about nickel 28 and just give us a quick uh, overview, please? Sure. So nickel 28 has a handful of, of royalties on uh, exploration and development assets in around the world, but primarily in Canada and Australia, so great jurisdictions. In Canada in particular, it has a royalty on Dumont. That's interesting because Goldman Sachs is reportedly running a process on that for Waterton, who owns Dumont, to seek a partner. So that would be fantastic. You know, that's a shovel-ready, fully permitted project in Canada. So potential that are bringing a partner and re-rate that value um, there. Turnigan, another great carbon-neutral project handful of projects in um, Australia. All those, of course, just giving us leverage to Nickel Move. And then our flagship project, which is, of course, Ramu, the Ramu Nickel Mine, operated by MCC, a fantastic partner to us. They've just been fantastic. Um, it's been producing for over seven years now. It's in steady state. It's going to operate for 30 to 50 years. And it produces, it's the largest producer of MHP in the world, which is going directly into batteries. So, you know, it's not next. We're not an exploration company. We're not a development company. We are a company with producing assets, which, you know, I think it sets us apart from a lot of the other names out there. And and you know, I think like we talked about, you know, when you're when you're expressing an interest in uh, nickel or copper or whatever it might, even gold, by the way, uh, I think it's important that you own a basket of names ranging from, you know, that producing name that it hits its its targets every quarter all the way down to a developer and then exploration so you can get lucky. So I think you should own through that, through the, um, the basket. And, and if you're putting that together and you're looking at nickel, the nickel 28, that's your producer. Um, that's your pure pre leverage producer. And that's pretty unique. There's not a lot of them out there. Well, that's Anthony Molesky from nickel 28. And Anthony, you have to come on this uh, investor Intel show more often. So keep us updated on what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Tracy.